Ricky is my father. Ricky is the one who got me here. He was like mainly the first believer in my music when everybody was making fun of me. Him, my brother Moot, they used to be there like 24 seven. My dad actually flew out with me for my first out of town show in LA. And that was dope. He was like, yo, you could do the show. I just got to come with you. Make sure everything was straight. I got my money and everything was cool. We had a whole week of just duds. Like our whole week was just full of like whack ass tracks and shit. And this was the one that just came out like hard as hell. We didn't complete it that day. We just chilled for like a probably like five days, you know, get the energy up, get the chi up. And then I just stumbled across, I was looking for like a like this um song from uh DJ Screw, like, you know, Fat Pat and stuff like that. Like just going through their freestyles and stuff. And then I stumbled upon a freestyle on accident. And I was like, oh, this is hard. So I start, I sent it to them. And then he was like, yo, this is really tough. I freestyled it. It was all the top of the head. Cause you know, you gotta put your mind to the pad to remember it, then back to the mic, and then you gotta recite it over and over again. And then you might get tired of that same flow. So my process was like, okay, mind to mic. Like, I don't want the middleman. The pad was the middleman. So it was just a mind to the mic. First day mocking. Now they hopping. Man, people still make fun of me, man. I got roasted by Smino. People still make fun of me. <laughs> hey, it happens. Everybody gets roasted. Everybody gets made fun of. So it's like, whatever. And plus, where I'm from, everybody be ranking every day. If you don't know how to rank in Florida, like, you pretty much done. I'm not even the best roaster. I'm not. I'll tell you that straight up. I'm not funny. I just know when to attack at the right time. All on the way, because they see me popping. Everybody just thought I was just ultimate. And that was it. Even before that, people just thought I was just threats. I had to work twice as hard for people to like to hear me. So that's when Taboo came out and Cloud Cobain, they was like, oh, he's really good. Like, no, nah, I've been good. Y'all just thought I was trash. Big, large pockets, they start flocking. Here's what I say when the ass keep knocking. Money separates families, off top. That's why when it comes down to me and my family, I'm just like, yeah, I know I got money and stuff like that, but I'm only gonna use it to help out what needs to be like done around the house or whatever the case may be. I'm not gonna just throw money at you because I want you out of my life. Nah, it's not like it doesn't go down like that. My daddy said, trust no man but your brothers and never leave your day ones in the gutter. Every time I would ride with my dad, it would be me and my brother Mook or whatever my brothers be in the car. And he'll just tell us stories about like his childhood and stuff like that, and stuff he learned. Him always like pushing forward on what we wanted to do with our lives. Like my dad was really big on that. My daddy said, treat young girls like your mother. My mama said, trust no hoe, use a rubber. Gee shit, my mama don't trust nobody. And yeah, I could say that for my mom. My mom loves us to death. She loves all her kids to death. But you know, she don't trust people. You know, my mom's a Scorpio, so it's like, ah. my mom just like gives me mad game about like, you know, stay prayed up. Like, stay away from these evil ass energies that's around you because they be trying to like trap people. Cause she watched the news and she watched what's, what be going on with other rappers and she was like, my son ain't gonna be that. I'ma act one, two, stop the track, bring it back, what it do? That was actually a shout out to both Fat Pat and my brother Treon. My brother Treon, every time he used to come on the block, he'd be like, oh yeah, boy, what it do? Don't even look out you. He'd be like, oh yeah, what it do? And then clap you up and just keep it moving. But the whole I'ma act one, two, that was my spin on what Fat Pat said on like one of his freestyles. He was like, I'ma act one, two, I'ma act just like a nigga do. That's pretty much like a flip of that. See, Ricky said, never let nobody get the one up on you. If they run up on you, hit them with a one, two, or a bitch slap. Leave the code to sack, your brother's gonna have your back regardless. My dad and my mom, they had a thing like, okay, if we fighting people outside the house, cool, long as we win. But once me or any of my brothers fight in the house, it's already messing up the whole energy and they're mad like, oh hell no, nah. y'all fighting in the crib? Nah, and we all get our ass whooped. Stick with your day one homies that was here before you started. And fear no man but the man above your head, pray before you go to bed, everything my mama said. Fear no man but the man above your head. Okay, it could be a man, it could be a woman. Basically, whatever that entity is, only fear that entity because whatever you throw out into the universe is what you're gonna get back. My mom's a Jehovah's Witness, so she would try to bring me to church. And her mother, like Emma Baker, God rest her soul. And your mama ain't shit. 
Your daddy ain't shit. And I've been making waves way before Nostalgic. It's a nod to parents. Nostalgic 64 was the first tape and I had a song called Parents, which your mom ain't shit and your daddy ain't shit. Let's go back before Nostalgic 64 and what you get is three mixtapes back when I was in Raider Clan, which was King Remembered, which was King of the Mischievous South, and then Strictly for My Raiders, and then Nostalgic came after those three tapes. So it was a nod to the lo-fi era. That was back in Carol City, yeah, when I was just a jit with an all black faded dicky with the Raider fit. Bro, I used to always wear dickies. <laughs> it's, it's a, I don't know what it is, bro. I used to fight in Dickies. Dickies was my shit. If you see me with a Dickie on, yeah, I'm finna go fade somebody. Or I was just wearing black pants and I didn't have no like skinny jeans. Like I didn't wear that shit. Now I do, but no. Nah. Well, slim fitted. That was it. We was lit. Y'all wasn't even shit yet. I realized like majority of the people that you know that are big now used to listen to Raider Clan and were influenced by Raider Clan. You could see it is dominant in the rap game. And I know y'all did a genius on the influence with Space Ghost Perp and Raider Clan. That's pretty much it. I get respect from a lot of rappers because I used to be in Raider Clan. Shit, even motherfucking um the DJ Marshmallow dude came up to me and was like, "Yo, Denzel Curry, you're a legend." I was like, "What the fuck? How the hell he know who I am?" I was like, "I am." Damn. We was 3-6 Wu-Tang mixed with Dipset. 3-6 Mafia because that's what everybody was comparing Raider Clan to. Then you had Wu-Tang because that's how deep we was because there was mad people in um, Raider Clan. And then Dipset because we was some fly ass niggas, but we just seem, seemed like fly ass niggas. Ricky used to take me to my first shows ever. You know what's crazy? My dad took me, my mom, and my brothers to a concert with this dude named Norman Brown. That was my first ever concert and I was like, four years old. I remember it vividly. He was like playing the guitar. Then he took his own shirt off and he was like in a white tee just playing the guitar, like Norman Brown, I'm telling you. And then I was like, what? And then I took my shirt off cause I had a white tee under and I was like, I want to be like that guy. Well, only drop jewels way before they drop cheddar. Jewels, like food for thought, you feel me? That's what jewels is, You're dropping gems on your ass. No PE. See what a cul-de-sac is. It's like a little roundabout, a dead end, but it's like houses within a dead end. I didn't grow up in a cul-de-sac, bro. I grew up in a neighborhood. 